The fundamental attribution error. We tend to assume the worst of other people. Now, if we only learn one thing this session, I want you to remember this, that people often let us down for more than one reason. When they fail to live up to a, a promise, you need to expand your view beyond just motivation, perhaps, to ability. And often when we commit the fundamental attribution error, we fail to take a look at other possible explanations as to what may be going on. So one of the things that you need to do is learn how to expand your view of others and to begin to avoid the fundamental attribution error. I don't know that you can see this, but this is one of my favorite far side cartoons. In 12th century Pisa, Italy, the construction firm of Morelli and Sons, whose members were all afflicted with a genetic disorder in which one leg was considerably shorter than the right, began working on a new tower. Now, you may think these people are just not motivated to build it straight, but maybe it's the way they're holding the plans, right? Looks good to them. You see, organizations don't behave, people do, and they behave for more than one reason. And yet you and I are often falling into this fundamental attribution error. So what can you do here? A couple of tips for getting your heart right, because my son needed a heart adjustment that evening. Even though he said to me, Dad, I was just drinking water. <laughs> and I said, oh, Stace. There is drinking water, and then there's drinking water, and you are doing the latter. How do you get your heart right? Well, first of all, you want to avoid the fundamental attribution error by asking two questions. Why would a reasonable, rational, and decent person do this? Are they just mean and nasty by DNA? I don't think so. Most of the time, there's something else driving the behavior. And secondly, what, if anything, am I pretending not to notice about my role in the problem? Did he have a role that evening? Now, if you asked him initially, he'd say no. But the more we talked about it, he realized that there was a responsibility to handle this differently. Let me finish off by reading this to you. I don't know whether you uh, have ever uh, heard of this or if this has ever come your way uh, via email, but I think it kind of sums up what we're talking about here. A woman was waiting in an airport one night with several long hours before her flight. She hunted for a book in the airport shop and bought a bag of cookies and found a place to drop. She was engrossed in her book, but happened to see that the man beside her, as bold as could be, grabbed a cookie or two from the bag between, which she tried to ignore to avoid a scene. She read, munched cookies, and watched the clock as the gusty cookie thief diminished her stock. She was getting more irritated as the minutes ticked by, thinking, if I wasn't so nice, I'd blacken his eye. With each cookie that she took, he took one too, and when only one was left, she wondered what he'd do. With a smile on his face and a nervous laugh, he took the last cookie and he broke it in half. He offered her half as he ate the other. She snatched it from him and thought, oh, brother, this guy has some nerve and he's also rude why he didn't even show any gratitude. She had never known when she had been so galled and sighed with relief when her flight was called. She gathered her belongings and headed for the gate, refusing to look back at the thieving ingrate. She boarded her plane and then sank in her seat, and then sought her book, which was almost complete. And as she reached in her belongings, she gasped with surprise. There were her bag of cookies in front of her eyes. If mine are here, she moaned with despair, then the others were his, and he tried to share. Too late to apologize, she realized with grief that she was the rude one, the ingrate, the thief. Thank you.